Today we're into Modern to see if we can win some games of Magic by not actually playing Magic, which means we're playing some $100 budget dredge. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth Live, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. And this week, we're trying to win some games of Modern by not really playing Magic at all. That's because we're playing a $100 version of one of Magic's most infamous and most hated decks in Dredge. So Dredge is one of the weirdest decks in the history of Magic. The game plan of this deck is, all we need to do to win the game, in theory, is get a card with Dredge in the graveyard. If you don't know Dredge, it's this horrible, horrible old mechanic where if you would draw a card, instead you can mill the Dredge amount of cards. So Stinkweed Imp is Dredge 5. So you'd mill 5 cards and get Stinkweed Imp back to your hand from your graveyard. So what our deck wants to do is on turn 1 or turn 2, use something like Otherworldly Gaze or looting rummaging effects like Merchant of the Veil, Cathartic Reunion to get a Dredger in the graveyard. And then every time we draw a card, Instead, we just dredge our dredgers, which is gonna fill our graveyard at lightning speed. We should be able to build most of our deck in like three or four or five turns, and that should just win us the game. Uh, all these card draw effects worth mentioning. We're not actually drawing cards with them. We're actually just dredging repeatedly. Uh, the cathartic reunions and thrilling discoveries in specific are like absurd in this deck because we get to discard two cards and then draw three cards. So this lets us discard the sink we damn circle Gary thugs in our hand and they'll be in the graveyard. So then when when the card draw part resolves, we just dredge them back into our hand, mill another 10, 15 cards or whatever. So why are we so dedicated to filling our graveyard? And the answer is we have a bunch of stuff that just does stuff for free if we mill it. Narc Amoeba, one mana, one, one flyer. If we mill it, it comes into play for free. That'll trigger prized amalgam, a three, three, that when a creature comes into play from our graveyard, will also come back into play from our graveyard and our next end step, Creeping Chill, drains for three when we mill it. And that'll trigger Silver Smoke Ghoul, which on our end step, if we gain three life, comes into play for free from our graveyard. And then Ox of Agonis isn't technically free, but it's another thing that comes back cheaply from the graveyard. So as we just mass fill our graveyard with these dredge effects in the first few turns of the game, we're going to build this massive board of creatures, drain our opponent for 12 with creeping chills, and hopefully just close out the game before our opponent can really do anything at lightning speed. The only problem with this plan is if our opponent has graveyard hate, things become much, much worse. Our deck is very dedicated to using the graveyard. If we have to like hard cast prized amalgams and hard cast silver smoke ghouls and arc amoebas, we're probably in for a bad time. So it's one of those decks where if our opponent can hate on what we're doing, we're probably just gonna lose horribly. But if they can't, we're probably gonna win spectacularly. Last card, non-land in the main deck, is Conflagrate, which is super weird. Uh, double red and X to deal X damage, divide as you choose among creatures or players. Absolutely horrible, it's three mana for one damage, five mana for two damage. The important thing is flashback of double red in discard X cards. So this does two things. Uh, we often just cast it for one red mana to deal zero damage, or even better, just dredge into our graveyard. And then we can flash it back for two mana to discard all of our dredge stuff and maybe close out the game and get in the last four or five six points of damage mana base the one challenge of this deck on a budget is we do really need four colors of mana we need blue for otherworldly gaze we need red and white for some of our rummaging discarding effects and then we need black in case we need to hard cast our dredgers if things go wrong so gemstone mine city of brass man of any color bunch of pains land some basics the sideboard of the deck I mentioned earlier, all we really care about is, does our opponent have graveyard hate? If they don't have graveyard hate, we get all this free value, we crush them. If they do have graveyard hate, we're in for a really bad time. So our whole sideboard, minus Tormod Grip, is dedicated to answering opposing graveyard hate. Portable Hole gets rid of any cheap permanent, so our opponent has a rest in peace on the battlefield. It's out of here. Stern Dismissal, good at bouncing Leyline of the Void. Ancient Grudge, wear tear for artifacts and enchantments. Leyline of Sanctity keeps our opponent from targeting us with endurance. Duress can take graveyard hate from our opponent's hand preemptively. Tormod script in case we run into the mirror. And that is $100 dredge for Vodder. That's our budget magic deck for this week. So let's jump into some games and see if we can win some games of magic by not really actually playing much magic at all. All. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoy it and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor Card Kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. Budget magic time. We are trying to win in modern this week by not playing magic. <laughs> 
<laughs> which means it is a hundred dollar dredge time and let's see what our opponent's up to oh god so opponent has to be some sort of affinity style deck this will be interesting oh god city of brass go this otherworldly gaze being good is gonna probably be necessary for us winning so we need to gaze into a dredger so we need thrilling discovery to Start making a big board. Dark Steel Citadel in Springleaf Drum. Sure, sure, sure. And Frogmite for free. Well, all right. We can also do things for free. Let's otherworldly gaze. Graveyard. Graveyard. I think we actually have to graveyard the thrilling discovery too. So we did hit a dredger, sort of. Not a good one, but our worst dredger. But it does say dredge, which means a thrilling discovery could do things. We'd still like another dredger. Yeah, let's dredge. Okay, there's a stinkweed. That's that's big. That's big, big, big. Uh, let's play a gemstone mine. White, red, thrilling discovery. So, uh, yes, we will use this ability to scar dark blast to start his prized amalgam. Dredge a stinkweed. A stinkweed. Golgari thug. Let's see what goodies we get. So, creeping chill. Yes. Creeping chill, also yes. So we have an ox in the graveyard. Wow, we didn't, oh, that's unfortunate. So no Narc Amoebas, no, no Narc Amoebas, no uh, Silver Schmoke Ghouls, sure. I mean, the good news is, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, we will dredge a Golgari Thug. There's a Narc Amoeba and a Creeping Chill. I mean, we do basically just dredge our deck here, right? That triggers surprise amalgams. Opponent goes to 11. Play the land. And... Yeah, yeah, thank you, City of Brass. Ox of Agonis. Exile a bunch of random stuff. So get back the Ox. Discard our hand. I mean, we get to essentially just dredge our deck here. Very close to it. So Ox, discard our hand. Dredge a Stinkweed. Dredge a Stinkweed. Stinkweed. I mean, we're down to 13 cards in our deck. There's a Narc Amoeba. There's all of our prized amalgams. This should be enough, right? This has got to be enough. So Narc Amoeba returns. We also have Silver Smo uh, Smote now. So pass the turn. Here comes our friends. Many, many friends. <laughs> so Silver Smote comes back. All the prized amalgams come back. And this should just be game, right? I mean, this is what happens when your opponent doesn't have graveyard hate. So we did what we're supposed to do in game one. The question is... Can we do it in games two and games three when our opponent theoretically is going to be able to hate on our graveyard? So we're going to bring in answers to graveyard hate. We're going to go down an ox, a merchant, a couple of dark blasts. Maybe we go two portable holes. I mean, they definitely have to have artifact graveyard hate. So that's the that's the question. Can we work around? Can we work around the graveyard hate? That did go well, though. Uh, we will mulligan. All right, this hand has no lands, so we will mulligan. Well, I mean, I guess this will keep. So we gotta put two cards to the bottom, which would probably be Gemstone Mine. I guess Prized Amalgam. We got the Dark Blast. It could be good. Show us a Esper Sentinel. Oh God, Relic of Progenitus. Well, that's what we were afraid of. Uh, Sulfurous Springs, go. So now we need to find an answer to the Relic. Ornithopter. I mean, we had to find an answer to the Relic or just hardcast stuff. I guess that's theoretically possible. Narco Amoeba. Thrilling Discovery. Discard a Dark Blast. Discard a Narc Amoeba. We're not going to dredge, though. All right. Well, we hit a land. That's that's fine. That's fine. Pass the turn. Gemstone Mine's annoying when we have to hardcast our stuff, though. But still, prized Melgum. Bigger than an Ornithopter. We have a, we have a game plan. Treasure Vault for our opponent. Uh, and oh god, thought cast, okay. Would you like to crack your relic and draw a card? All right, not yet. Opponent activates. I mean, I think we dredge now. One way to get through the relic is making our opponent crack it. So yeah, let's dredge. Play the land. Are we actually just running out silver smoke? I really don't wanna. I'm afraid of this gemstone mine running out of activations. That would be an issue. Pass the turn. One thing worth noting about Silver Smoke, doesn't come up super often, but it is card draw at instant speed. And card draw at instant speed is a way we can like trigger dredge. Not relevant at the moment, but there could be a time when that is actually relevant with this deck. So keep that in mind, instant speed dredging is a, a sneaky way to like do things in response to our opponent. Oh, 
Thought Monitor. Oh, this is looking bad. The opponent, Thought Monitor, draws some cards. Blink Moth Nexus. Exiles. Yeah, we need to we need to find an answer to this graveyard hate to have any realistic shot here. Narc Amoeba. Well, let's attack. We're probably gonna sack the Silver Smoke. Takes it. What's the other option? Hardcast Narc Amoeba? Oh goodness, I can't believe we're doing this. Alright, Narc Amoeba. Backup plan. Backup plan achieved. Go. <laughs> About it adapts. Frogmite for free. Yeah, this is this is where our opponent gets to really snowball hard. Thought monitor. Yeah, this one's slipping away. Well, okay, so we know we need oh double relic. Alright, that's that's actually good enough. With double relic, there's there's no way we're gonna win from here. Well, I mean I don't wanna get I don't wanna get yelled at for the early scoop, so literally no way we can win, right? There's literally no way. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna scoop. We're gonna scoop. Yeah, double relic is is good enough. Well, I mean that's how this deck works. Game one, absolutely crush him laughably. Game two and game three, can you dodge the hate or hate the hate? Well, I think we're bringing in uh the last portable hole. Yeah, let's go to the last merchant. Try it like that. So we have all of our answers to Graveyard Heat possible. We'll see. We'll see if it's enough. Being on the play is helpful. That is good news. A tiny, tiny bit of good news. This hand. So we have the portable hole. Cathartic reunions. No dredger, though. I think we actually got a mulligan. All right. I mean, this we're going to keep. So we have no clean answer to Graveyard Heat. We do have ways to fill our graveyard on turn two. We'll put a Sulphur Springs... Actually, do we put a City of Brass to the bottom? Yeah, let's put a City of Brass to the bottom. The upside of the other pain lands is we can just activate them for colorless mana, which is sometimes relevant. Like if we get to a point where we have to hard cast a stink we dimp, two pain lands, one city of brass is better than better than two city of brass. Well, sulfurous springs, go. Alright, no, no graveyard hate turn one. How about that? How about no relic? Spring leaf drum. And alright, well, this is our shot. Pony passes. Be good, dredge gods. Cathartic reunion. Well, Battlefield Fjorge. And one and two. Cathartic reunion. Pitch stinkweed. Pitch. Eh, yeah, let's pitch the land. Stinkweed and land. Here comes the dredging. We need to dredge into a dredger. Okay, we did not. That wasn't great. So we. <laughs> We did not get the dredge chain going. We dredged, but we just dredged once and then drew Spire of Industry. Uh, Ornithopter, do you have graveyard hate? That's the real question. I mean, if our opponent kept a non-graveyard hate hand, we're kind of okay. Portable hole, that's not bad. Well, red and white. Thrilling discovery. Actually, <laughs> we have to tap a little better than that. Red and white, thrilling discovery. All right, all right, all right, sure. Play the land past the turn. We need a few more cards in the graveyard before we can ox. All right, there's a Frogmite. Pony is down to two cards in hand. Just kidding. Back up to three cards in hand, Thoughtcast. Oh, back up to four cards in hand, Thoughtcast again. And Ornithopter. They actually have mana for another Metallic Rebuke, don't they? Underground River. Well, we will red and whatever. Cathartic Reunion. Discard pri... Actually, wait. Is there... Should we portable hole the Springleaf drum? I kind of think we do. If our opponent had graveyard hate, they would have played it. This plays around metallic rebuke. This is our turn. If we're going to make it happen, this is the turn. So let's portable hole to get rid of the Springleaf drum because we really need this to resolve. We need to dredge into stuff to get back the silver smoots. If we're going to build a big board, this is the this is the time. So snipe the Springleaf drum. Now we get to cathartic reunion, stinkweed, prized amalgam. All right, come on, deck. Dredge Stinkweed. Dredge Thug. Dredge Stinkweed. Oh, okay. Okay, we got there. Wow. I was afraid we were not going to hit anything to come into play. So we get the Nargami, but that's going to trigger the prize amalgams. We get the Creeping Chill. That's going to get back the Silver Smotes. I guess we play the land now. Pass the turn. So hopefully this is enough. Hopefully this is enough. We'll see what our opponent can do. So we build our big board. We build our big board. We get all of our stuff back. All right, opponent. Uh, right, opponent. Untaps. Tap land. Nettle cyst. Okay. I mean, that's a, that's a big boy. That is a big boy, but we do have an ancient grudge in the graveyard, although we don't have the mana to cast it yet. Opponent passes. We draw a swamp. Play the swamp. Get in as much damage as we can. But now we get to Ox. Yeah, I mean, our opponent just didn't find the graveyard hate. So we get to Ox. Eight. 
So get back the ox, discard our hand. Yeah, oxes, this is where ox is like so ridiculous. So ox triggers the prized amalgam that died. More importantly, it discards our hand. We get to dredge stinkweed and stinkweed. And that actually, wow, that's game. That is, that is all the creeping chills. <laughs> well, if you ever play against dredge, I will tell you the cheat code. Mulligan until you have graveyard hate. Don't convince yourself, oh, my counter spell is going to be enough. Normally, it's not. You really, really need the graveyard hate, because if you don't, we get to do stuff like this. Uh, that was a pretty good one. That was a pretty good one. That was a nice example of how uh, dredge on $100 can just kind of wreck people. Budget magic time. We are trying to do some uh, dredging. Not playing, trying to not play magic this week on a $100 budget. Tron A. All right, well, let's see how this goes. I mean, this hand's not bad because we can merchant the stinkweed to start dredging. Sulfurous Springs, go. What do you got, Tron? Ancient Stirrings, looking for Tron lands. So, I mean, I guess we just gotta hope we build a big board before, before our opponent can stop it. All right, Expedition Map. Well, all right, come on, merchant. <laughs> do a little, do a little haggling here. Haggle, discard stinkweed, dredge stinkweed. Hit nothing especially helpful. I mean, we hit a stinkweed, I guess, which is somewhat helpful. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just dredge stinkweed. Creeping chill. Gemstone mine. Oh, we got all the prized amalgams, but no way to no way to get them back at the moment. All right, natural Tron. Incarn liberated. Well, that's probably gonna be bad for us. Uh, let's do some otherworldly gazing. We really need to like hit a narc amoeba. Okay, there's. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Mill everything. We hit a narc amoeba. That's gonna get back to prized amalgams. This gives us a shot. I mean, our opponent still does have Tron. So I don't know how much of a shot it is, but we do get to kill the Karn. And we have some bodies on the battlefield. So prized amalgam, get it back. Prized amalgam, get it back. Untap, dredge stinkweed. Okay, I mean, those are not bad hits. Well, I guess it's gonna depend on if our opponent has like a sweeper, a one ring, an Ugin. Those are the cards that would get us most here. Gotta kill the Karn, I think. Hit our opponent. We have a dark blast in the graveyard? Well, I guess we play him out in. Run out a Golgari thug. Gotta, gotta increase that clock past the turn. All right, get back a prized amalgam and let's see if they got the one ring or an Ugin. Expedition map cracked. All right, opponent is not scooping, so that's a bad sign. Oblivion stone. All right, so that does keep our opponent alive for a turn, unfortunately. I don't even know, do we even dredge? Probably not this turn. Attack you with everything. So opponent has to oblivion stone. So they found the sweeper. Let's put Narc Amoeba back on top of our deck. Actually, that doesn't work the way we want to, does it? Oh, actually, it does work. Um, well, play Gemstone Mine. Should we, when do we do this is the question. So we can Merchant, Dredge Stinkweed, Mill the Narcomy, but get all of our stuff back. Doing it now plays around Graveyard Hate. Doing it later plays around Ugin. The question is, which is, which is more likely to wreck us? Ah, oh, they play Graveyard Hate. They don't play Ugin as much. Oh God, what do we do? What's the right choice? Yeah, I think we do it now because of Relic. All right, so Haggle, discard Stinkweed, Dredge Stinkweed, Narc Amoeba returns, Prized Amalgams return, Creeping Chill hits you to seven. Well, we passed the turn. Do you have another Sweeper? Yeah, so I think this is correct just because there's more relics in the typical Tron deck, Relic of Progenitus's, than there are Ugin's. Chromatic Star, cracks it. Sylvan Scrying, K okay. for another tower. Worm Coil Engine, and Walking Ballista. That probably beats us, doesn't it? That is unfortunate. Worm Coil A, Worm Coil A. We don't have enough Creeping Chill, so if we attack, we don't really get in any damage. Uh, so let's dredge a Thug. Hit nothing of relevance. Conflagrate, not enough cards. Oh God, so close. So close and yet so very far. 
So once they gain six with Worm Coil, are we just dead? Is that the... Plus they have this Walking Ballista that's going to go off. Is there any... Is there any realistic way of us winning from here, I guess, is the question. All right, opponent's going to use the Walking Ballista to kill the Narc Amoeba. So we will Dark Blast the Ballista. Opponent pings us. I mean, I guess we're just going to... Yeah, I mean, I guess this is what we got. Configrate discard everything all right opponent goes to three but attacking doesn't do anything so we gotta pass if we attack we hit for six but our opponent gains six we made it close we made it close opponent combat if they don't attack we have an out which is dredging the last we need to dredge the last creeping chill that is we could also hit an ox of Agonis, which we have not seen an ox of Agonis yet ox or creeping chill please okay so we pass the turn now we have the the desperation out of otherworldly gaze. Hope the creeping chill is in our top three. Opponent land. No attacks. Sooner or later we're gonna hit this, right? We got to. Otherworldly gaze. Well, there's the oxen. We were so close. Mill the ox, mill the ox, mill the swamp. I think this should get us there. No creeping chill. We Ox of Agonis. There is still one Creeping Chill, right? Am I? I'm not an idiot, am I? Well, I know I'm an idiot, but I think there's still a Creeping Chill. I don't think I missed that. This should literally dredge the rest of our deck, which means we gotta find the Creeping Chill. That's just how math works. Ah, there we go. There we go. All right. One card left, final creeping chill, and well, I guess uh, not playing magic can beat uh, can beat Tron. Apparently, our opponent even had the Karn too. It's not like our opponent just had a horrible draw. Like they did what their deck is supposed to do, and uh, we just did it better. <laughs> Although I am super terrified of this matchup. <laughs> this deck, they got Karn to get the Graveyard Hate. They got Graveyard Hate in the main deck. They got a bunch of Sweepers. They got a bunch of Ugids. Seems like a sketchy one. Uh, so Artifact Hate in. Is Portable Hole even worth it? It can hit a Relic, but it gets blown up by Oblivion Stone. Dark Blast, I mean it dredges, but it doesn't do much. Maybe the Duress is better? What about Conflagrate? I mean, I guess Conflagrate ended up being essential there. Portable? I'm really on the fence about Portable Hole, if that's actually worth it. Maybe we get on like one Ox, one more Duress. Portable Hole gets got by Ugin, Ulamog, Oblivion Stone. You know what? Let's run it like that. Let's run it like that. All right, on the draw against Tron. Can our <laughs> $100 dredge deck keep up? All right, we got the Ancient Grudge. That's that's a bit of good news. And the Wear Tear, that's another bit of good news. None of this stops us from just losing to big Tron things, but it does stop our opponent's hate cards. What do we draw? Opponent has Chromatic Star, sure. Another Narcomy, but that's not, not the best. All right, pass the turn. Yeah, we would much rather have those in our deck, but what can you do? Chromatic Sphere. And crack screen, relic of progenitus. All right, so now we gotta blow that up before we do anything, unfortunately. We untap, we will, do we just do this right now? It keeps our opponent from drawing a card, probably. Let's just ancient grudge it. We could do it at instant speed, but I think we'd rather keep our opponent from cycling. Hopefully they don't have another one. And then next turn, drawing the Golgari Thug is actually pretty good because we can Thrilling Discovery, discard a Stinkweed and Golgari Thug and hopefully build a big board. All right, Power Plant. Expedition Map. So Tron is coming next turn. I guess we'll see what our opponent has to go with it. Hopefully it's not a Nugan. Well, can we have a big enough turn to beat whatever our opponent does next turn? That is the question. Probably depends on what our opponent does next turn, honestly. So we untap, we draw, Battlefield Fjorge. All right, so play the Fjorge and red and white and thrilling discovery. Yes, discard and discard. Dredge Stinkweed, Dredge Stinkweed, Dredge Stinkweed. Wow, did we just get a creeping chill? Is that it? Oh dear, okay, well, that was not the best dredging we've ever done. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, that's pretty bad, because that means now Karn for Graveyard Hate is actually really good here. Opponent, Tron Assembled for Graveyard Hate, which is really good here. It's probably Tormod's Crypt, which is actually the worst one for us. Yeah, Tormod's Crypt. Opponent, please, a Tormod's Crypt. Sex a Tormod script, and there goes our graveyard. Yeah, that was some that was some pretty low roll dredging to not get a single creature. It is partly because we drew two Narc Amoebas, which definitely doesn't help. 
and I'm pretty sure there's so how could we win from here we got to draw we got to draw another like cathartic reunion effect I guess is the one sort of realistic shot swamp that is not well um boom 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 <laughs> stinky coming for you past the turn I mean we dredge what 15 and just hit nothing stone nothing about it power plant tapping all the mana well Sure. All right. All right. Well, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of good news, which is we are on the play for game number three. The bad news is still our opponent has infinite hate for what we're trying to do. <laughs> you don't really want to run into the to the main deck, main deck graveyard hate deck. That is not ideal for us. All right. We'll bring in one portable hole. Run it like that. We get to play first. We really need just a big explosive start. Turn one, otherworldly gaze. Turn two, cathartic reunion, stinkweed prize amalgam. Hope we don't low roll with our dredging as much as last game. That seems fast enough to beat a relic of progenitus at least. Well, gemstone, mine, go. Yeah. I mean, we got a plan. We'll see if it's enough. We'll see if it's enough. Pony went to five, but Tron does that pretty regularly. Urza's mine in chromatic star. Well, okay, be good, otherworldly gaze. Otherworldly gaze. Well, graveyard. Do we want to keep a land on the top of our deck? Yeah, I guess actually a city of brass is fine here. All right, this is kind of unfortunate. So we get a narc amoeba, which I guess we're not going to complain about. Although we'd rather have that to get the prize amalgam into play. Well, the city of brass at least gives us a land that doesn't run out, which is a problem with the gemstone mine. So city of brass. All right, we need this to go well. Cathartic reunion. Discard, discard. So dredge stinkweed and whiff. Well, that's not what we were hoping for. Yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of the nightmare scenario there. Ah, <sighs> so Stinkweed does not dredge into another dredger. And opponent has a relic of progenitus and exiles a graveyard and draws a card. I mean, we kind of get to try again. So play the Sulphurus Springs, red and whatever. Red and whatever. Cathartic reunion. Discard a Stinkweed. Discard a Ox of Agonis. Dredge the Stinkweed. Oh, come on, Magic Gods. Ah! <laughs> oh my, oh, we are so unlucky. So we dredge five with Stinkweed. We did not hit another Dredger. We did not hit another Dredger. So we had to draw two actual cards, and the next two cards were two Golgari thugs. So if the order of the deck was very, very slightly different, we would have got to dredge a ton of cards. Opponent has a one ring. Uh-huh, that's not good for us. And gonna start drawing with the one ring. And finds more Relic of Progenitus's. Looking bad. Looking pretty bad. So we can't deal damage this turn, because our opponent has the one ring. They're gonna start exiling random cards from the graveyard, sure, so our Ox of Agonis isn't gonna do anything. We untap, no reason to attack, we draw another Ox of Agonis. Play Gemstone Mine, and I guess we just pass the turn. It is not looking good. It is not looking good for our non-magic magic deck. Opponent has something else with their infinite mana. They're going to crack the relic. Well, okay. Otherworldly Gaze. Well, put on top, put on top. Put on top. Opponent draws a card. All right, here go, opponent. Untaps with the one ring and Tron assembled. And draws a bunch of cards and plays another Tron land and follows it up with a pump fake. Another one ring. It's a good play pattern. Gonna get graveyard hate. Yeah, that's, that is unfortunate. Or another Relic of Progenitus. It never ends. Opponent passes. It's almost like the One Ring is a very strong card. Uh, so we get to hit the Karn. Kill the Karn. Opponent doesn't have mana for Relic, so I think we still do. I think we still do go for the Ox here. Not feeling confident at all that we're going to survive this, but... All right, so make all of our mana. We do get to dredge a bunch. Discard our hand. Opponent's going to draw a card. How many creeping chills do we have? Two? Opponent. Excise land. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I mean, we really need this to go well. And then we need our opponent not to have a sweeper. So, dredge stink we imp. All right. So we get an arc amoeba. That's going to get back our prize to Malgum. We're going to hit ya. Wait, that doesn't work? Oh, it's damage? Oh, that's so unfortunate. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's not great. 
That's not great. <laughs> Creeping Chill doesn't target, but it deals damage. So it still doesn't actually work through the one ring, unfortunately. Well, okay. We built the board that is lethal. Does our opponent have a sweeper off of their infinite one ring draws? Probably. Opponent gonna draw with the one ring. Tron, but you get to draw infinite cards is uh, is pretty brutal. All right, opponent, can you sweep the board? The answer is yes, with an Oblivion Stone. Yeah, so I think that actually just does it now because we don't have any creeping chills left. And there's graveyard hate, so yeah, we're just, we're dead. All right, one ring, pretty good. Yeah, we got a mulligan this. We really need the creeping chills in our deck, not in our hand. So I don't think we can keep two creeping chills. The good thing is Dredge does mulligan. Well, God, two more creeping chills. All right. Dredge does not mind starting with like five cards in hand. Ugh. All right. I mean, this we got to keep. The good news is we don't have any creeping chills in hand. So score. This other worldly gaze is going to be kind of important here. The Merchant of Vale is also nice. That's a way we could just land Merchant of the Vale, discard our Dredge or Dredge. But we're probably going to start on other worldly gaze first, I think. Watery Grave for our opponent. We wouldn't mind land number two. We really want two lands. Another other worldly gaze. All right. I think gaze is definitely better than just merchanting and dredging a few, especially since we do kind of want to hit a land. Demir A. There is a Demir control deck running around. Preordained, sure. Well, that's other worldly gaze where opponents tapped out. Well, Stinkweed Imp Graveyard. Creeping Chill Graveyard. Land, I guess, on top. Are we just dredging the stink we didn't? Maybe we should have just put the land in the graveyard and dredged. Ah, two lands though. Two lands is important with this deck. Opponent, a Boro. Interesting. So I might be mill. Oh, mill versus dredge. What a, <laughs> what a, what a weird world. Well, do we dredge the imp and admit we punted or do we keep the land? I think we're going to dredge the imp. Merchant of the Veil. So we get to discard the stink weed and dredge the stink weed. Just kidding. Opponent has Spell Pierce. Our opponent might be milling. That would make the most sense. Opponent. Uh, yeah, I kind of regret not drawing that land now, especially since our gemstone mine's down to one counter. <laughs> the good news is if our opponent actually is mill, they're going to be filling our graveyard for us, so we might win thanks to our opponent. Dredge the Imp. Get a Creeping Chill. Okay. And we get back a Silver Smoke, at least. So I think this is why Dredge is not really playing Magic. <laughs> <laughs> we have one land. We can't even really do anything because if we activate our land, we lose it. So we can't really cast spells, but we just added nine power to the battlefield and we've drained our opponent for six so far. So we're like doing literally nothing magic wise and we are kind of crushing our opponent. Opponent going to sack the polluted delta. Okay. The other nice thing is even if our opponent has removal, like, okay, fatal push, sure. They're just going to come back again. Eventually, we're going to dredge another Creeping Chill, and then all the Silver Smelts are going to come back again. So that is the that is the power of dredge. You just, like, keep dredging. Uh, this is, like, the best example, because we should have probably kept that second land so we could actually do things, and, and hopefully it doesn't actually matter. Bounce their Onabaro. So they need more blue mana? I'm super confused. Okay, opponent bounces a Barrow. Frank's, hey, thank you, opponent. Frank's sanity. Okay. Opponent is doing our job for us. Oh, there's some Narcomoebas. I think our opponent's dead now. Well, all right. We're going to go for the reverse flawless victory here. Sack our land. And opponent scoops it up. <laughs> that might be the first time in my magic life that I have won by flawless victory myself. Technically, when we won that game, we had zero permanence on the battlefield. I think we bring in the ley lines. So what are, like every matchup, we're worried about graveyard hate. The weird thing about mill is their graveyard hate is a lot of times like extirpates and surgical extractions. Those we can't really stop. Crypt incursion would be a blowout. I don't feel like Dark Blast does much. Ley line shuts down some mill, right? But not all of it. Probably bring the portable holes. They can hit crabs and they can deal with, I don't know, whatever, whatever graveyard paid our opponent has. Let's, uh, let's write like that. Yeah. No blue man is awkward. Narcomoeba would be better in our deck, but I think this is, is it fine? We have merchant, so we can start dredging. I think we actually mulligan. Oh God, I regret mulliganing. Okay, zero lander. This is a horrible hand, but I guess we keep it. And if we draw a land for Thrilling Discovery, we're kind of in business. So we can put 
ox to the bottom and a dredger, maybe? Yeah, that's that seems fine. We do get to start with the ley line. We'll see if this ley line actually does anything. All right, so we really need to draw it. The good news is we're up against Mill. So I'm not sure how much we care about. Oh, God, Soul Guide Lantern. OK, so now we also need to find an answer for that. Ah, oh, graveyard hate. Dredge is such a funny deck because, well, we hit the land. That's good news. Dredge is such a funny deck. You should almost always win game one. At least that's the theory. Like, you should be heavily favored in game one. But then game two and game three, everyone's going to have graveyard hate, and it becomes much harder. Like, game one, we won without really doing anything. That is the that is the power of dredge. Even a $100 dredge, it just, like, it's not really playing magic. It's doing something that most decks don't interact with. After sideboarding, though, most decks can interact, and life becomes a little bit more challenging a blue source at some point would be fine another stink weed uh, well i mean i think we have to we have to thrilling discovery discard hmm, are we dredging i don't even know is it even worth dredging here because our opponent can just exile our graveyard i think we just draw oh, <laughs> oh god all right we should have dredged i mean it wouldn't have really mattered because our opponent would just wipe our graveyard but but those three cards are not cards we really wanted to draw. We were at least hoping to hit a land. With this graveyard hate out, we either got to find an answer to the graveyard hate or we need to get lands and just start like hard casting Stinkweed. It's the classic, the classic dredge backup plan of hard casting very underpowered creatures. <laughs> opponent, oh, ensnaring bridge. That actually might just win our opponent the game. Cathartic reunion, all right. So I think we're doing the same thing discarding but not dredging because there's still graveyard hate well there's a land at least and a portable portable hole is something the problem is this ensnaring bridge the way we sideboarded we did not bring in anything that can be ensnaring bridge so we need to we need to do something quickly so we got to get rid of this soul guide lantern once our opponent gets empty handed we just can't win essentially so we need to get our opponent, uh, get rid of the Graveyard 8 with a Portable Hole. See if they sack it. Next turn, we in Thrilling Discovery, discard Stinkweed and Prized Amalgam. Hopefully hit something that lets us put some creatures into play and just hope we can get in some damage before our opponent empties their hand. Because once they get empty handed, we just, we we essentially scoop. We sideboarded in a way where we brought in Portable Holes and we brought in Ley Lines. We did not bring in anything that can blow up a three, <laughs> three mana artifact. Did not play around the Ensnaring Bridge. Well, our opponent also can win by not playing Magic. <laughs> just by playing an ensnaring bridge. Opponent preordains, plays a land, sure, sure, sure. We draw. Actually, we can dredge, right? We might as well dredge. This is our turn to do something big. All right, we dredge, nothing super relevant. Well, let's see if Thrilling Discovery resolves. Hilariously, Thrilling Discovery is like worse in our deck than, than Cathartic Reunion because we really want to discard. It resolves the discard at, a, at resolution. If they counter our Thrilling Discovery, we're pretty much done for, right? Is there any argument? Maybe we pass and just otherworldly gaze? That might be better. Yeah, let's do it. Let's pass. Extra Predator Creeping Chills. That's not great. Oh, that's bad. So getting rid of our Creeping Chills means we don't get back our Silver Smotes. Let's look at our sideboard. Let's just double check. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure this means we literally can't win the game. Yeah, Ancient Grudges in the sideboard, Wear Tears in the sideboard. So without Creeping Chills, I think we're pretty safe to scoop here. I guess we can give it like another turn. Our opponent still currently has four cards in hand. Tasha's Hideous Laughter, oh boy. All right, Exiles, well, very huge number of cards, okay. And plays a land, down to two cards in hand. Oh, even more, and a Hedron Crab. Yeah, I don't think we can win now. Will Otherworldly Gaze. I'm pretty sure that just does it because we can't kill the bridge. Well, now we know. We could and should sideboard differently. Well, mill the prized amalgam, mill the silver smoke, mill the land. I don't even know what we're looking for at this point. A card that doesn't exist in our <laughs> in our deck. We're hoping that we have forgot some artifact destruction spell. Like, even if we get back our prized amalgams, we can't attack. So yeah, I think we're just done. Well... Sideboard plan needs to change a little bit. So let's bring in the Ancient Grudge. Let's bring in the Wear Tears. Are the Ley Lines even worth it? It doesn't stop Tasha's hideous laughter. It does kind of annoy Hedron Crab. It does stop that. It doesn't stop the Extirpates. It stops Crypt's Incursion if that's a thing. Now our opponent also has the fear of Ley Lines since they saw it last game. So maybe that's the value we get out of Ley Line is our opponent sees it and maybe it messes with our sideboard plan. Yeah, I think we're gonna cut the Ley Lines again. Bringing them in might've been actually incorrect. 
Good news is we are in the play for game number three, and we're also against Mill, a deck that should be helping our game plan. We're on the play. Let's get a good hand. Ugh, zero lands. Okay. I wonder if this is a hand we are supposed to keep. So I think the general rule of dredge is you really need to be able to get a dredger in the graveyard. On the other hand, this hand is really good at fighting through hate because we have the duress and around the play. So we can take graveyard hate. We have the portable hole, which can answer another piece of graveyard hate and our opponent's mill. So if there's any matchup this hand's acceptable, I bet it's mill because they're gonna fill our graveyard. Like that is the whole point of that. What a weird matchup. <laughs> We're trying to mill our deck. Our opponent's also trying to mill our deck. So they're kind of helping us. But at the same time, because they're trying to mill our deck, they got a bunch of graveyard hate because they know they could be milling our deck. Very, very odd. Very, very odd matchup. <laughs> I think we're going to keep this based on the we're up against mill theory. I don't know if it's correct. I think in general, if you decide to play dredge, as a general rule, I think you want to mill until you can get a dredger in the graveyard by turn two at a minimum. By turn one, ideally, that's even better if you have a, a turn one way to do it. But at least by turn two, you need to be getting the dredger in the graveyard. But I kind of like this in game three. Like we have multiple pieces of interaction. We can deal with our opponents. A we'll draw something eventually, right? The stinkweed means any sort of looting effect or rummaging effect is like super live. So we're going to keep, we're going to put a Battlefield Fjord. Actually, Sulfur, it really doesn't matter which pain land we put to the bottom with two City of Brasses. The nice thing about this is our very painful mana base doesn't really matter much against Mill. They're they're not going to be damaging us. They're, they're essentially a burn deck, but their burn doesn't actually deal damage. Well, let's see if our plan of not being able to dredge actually works. City of Brass is a little annoying to play with because of the trigger. Extirpate, Archive Trap, Ruin Crab. Well, we're definitely taking Extirpate. Ruin Crab, I think we actually would like our opponent to play. Ruin Crab has to target us. It can't target our opponent. So I don't even know if our opponent plays it. Normally that's like a staple in, in Mill decks, your best turn. Oh, come on now. All right, opponent. Top deck, Soul Guide Lantern. Good thing we kept the portable hole. Our, our super janky keep is working out. Dress the extirpate, portable hold the soul guide lantern. That's kind of the dream with this hand. Drawing creeping chill, less of a dream. You and your silly trigger. I'm glad they made mana confluence just because it's less annoying to play on Moto. All right, get rid of the graveyard hate. Uh, I guess we keep playing City of Brasses, pass the turn. The question's gonna be, do we play Stinkweed up next turn? I don't know if we do. We really wanna keep cards in hand. So if we draw a Cathartic Reunion or Thrilling Discovery, we can cast it and discard a dredger. Let's see what we draw. So having two cards in hand is actually kind of important. Thrilling this eh, silver smell. Okay, well, backup plan achieved. We are going to spend three, we have two points of life from these City of Brasses. Good thing we're up against dredge, <laughs> or a good thing we're up against mill and they can't hurt us. We're gonna spend two life to play a 3-1 silver smoke ghoul. Beat down commence. Honestly, I don't know if our opponent can beat it. And because we're a budget mana base, Archive Trap is like super bad. We don't have any fetch land, so it's always gonna be five mana. Ooh, thank you, opponent. Opponent cycles, Frank Xanity mills us. We get a prized amalgam, which is good. Visions of Beyond cycles. Well, glad to see that go early rather than later when it's a draw three. Opponent, play your crab and mill us. Ooh, all right, opponent. This might just be crab on chump blocking duty, actually. Well, let's get in with the silver smoke. See if our opponent, see if our opponent blocks. New. All right. Is our opponent going to stop playing lands then? I don't even. <laughs> I don't even know. So we can stack this silver smoke to draw a card. I think maybe what we want to do. Yeah. So we can stack this to draw a card. We have creeping chill in hand. We have a prized amalgam in the graveyard. Play the land. Pass the turd. I think our game plan is end of our opponent's turn. Stack silver smoke to draw a card. Next turn, untap and hard cast the Creeping Chill to get back the Silver Smoke, to get back the Prized Amalgam, and hopefully that's enough. Opponent, pass, oh, plays a land, okay. Well, that's good. Oh no, I'm double Creeping Chill. I mean, that's fine. Oh dear, okay. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, there goes our plan. So now we have no Creeping Chills. Well, I guess we are fully on the backup plan now of Beaten down with silver smotes. We might be hard casting the stinkweed imp. I think we have reached that point in the game. Oh, we had a cool little plan of hard casting that creeping chill too, and that extra bait ruined it. All right, so we deal zero damage. I mean, the good news is our opponent's got one card in hand, and we know it's an archive trap, and I don't even think our opponent wants to cast archive trap unless it's gonna straight up kill us. Is the one damage from stinkweed imp worth it? 
I'm very much on the fence. If it was like a silver smoke, we definitely cast it. I still like being able to cathartic reunion if we draw it. Yeah, let's let's just wait. We we have our clock. We're good. So if we draw a land, we can Oxvagonus. If we don't draw a land, we're drawing something that fills our graveyard. The only thing that's a bad draw here is really another silver smoke, I guess, or another stinkweed imp, I guess. A bone, it passes. No land drop this turn. Prized. Okay, well, we're still on the backup plan. Get in with the silver smoke. This is the most playing real magic Dredge ever does. When you get when you get shut down by graveyard hate and you have to just hard cast your threats. Plus, we're against mills, so there's a question like how aggressively do we want to mill ourselves? They could just mill us out. What if they draw Tasha's hideous laughter? Yes, we are we're gonna hard cast a prized amalgam to join our silver smoke, and we are going to beat down with three threes. Just how we drew it up. All right, opponent. Oh, here they go. Okay, opponent. No fear. Oh, there's all of our card draw. Opponent plays line, mills us. Well, can you beat two three powered attackers? Ruin crab. Normally drawing prize amalgam is horrible, but in this case, it's actually probably our best draw. If we're not going to draw a card draw to like fill our graveyard, <laughs> it is our biggest castable creature. Opponent. Okay, that wow, they're actually going to mill. I was wondering if they were going to mill or not. So I guess their game plan is going to be like mill mill. They have the archive trap. If they can like Tasha's hideous laughter archive trap. I wonder if they should have got an untap land and just cast the and just cast the um the archive trap. That might have been their best plan here. And then hope to just lucky I uh, get super lucky by drawing Tasha's hideous laughter and like getting everything. Well, all right. We're up to 3-3-3s three, 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 or actually 1-3-1. One, one. Can you beat it? Can you beat the super fair dredge beat down mill? Apparently not. Well, not exactly how we drew it up, but uh, eh, we'll take it. We'll take it. We played a little bit too much magic that game for being dredge, but we'll, we'll fix that next game. Next game, we'll make sure not to play any magic. Sand seems fine. Our only dredge is Dark Blast, which isn't the best, but we have multiple, we have multiple options here. Let's City of Brass. I think we just pass. Maybe it's better to under Otherworldly Gaze first. We could just Merchant, discard Dark Blast, dredge three, but if we can gaze a dredge or two in the graveyard, we can set up for a good Thrill of Discovery next turn. That's probably, that's probably ideal. Breeding pool on tap for our opponent. And how about something that dies to Dark Blast? Arbor Elf. Opponent's going to do some griefing. All right, all right, all right, that's interesting. So is this living end? These are not typical scam colors. Do we just let this go or do we gaze? I guess we just let it go. They're probably not taking gaze anyway. Yeah, this has gotta be living end, I assume. This should be interesting because our deck is also good at filling the graveyard. And we have the creeping chills that will mill. This might actually be, <laughs> this might actually be a good matchup. All right, they take the thrill of discovery. That makes sense. Grief goes away. Well, let's see. Let's see what we can mill. Oh, they pitch Architects of Will, so it's definitely Living End. Living End's only deck that actually plays Architects. All right, well, we'll see. Opponent, passing. Otherworldly Gaze, I think, main phase? Because Prize Amalgam comes back on the next end step. So if we hit like Prize Amalgam Narc Amoeba, we'd rather do it now. Odds of that, not super high, but still. Well, Prize Amalgam Graveyard, Gemstone Mine Graveyard. Do we keep a Gemstone Mine? Do we need another land? Yeah, let's just Graveyard, Graveyard, Graveyard. I think that's fine. Graveyard everything. All right, bonus passes. Sure. Cathartic Reunion. Well, okay. Do we cast it is the question. Do we even want to build a big board pre-living in? That's the, that's the other question. So we could discard like Dark Blast Ox? We'll hold on to the merchant. Discard Ox, discard Dark Blast. Dredge Dark Blast. Missed on Dredgers, which is a little awkward. Hit ya, down to 50. I mean, our graveyard's filling. I think what we wanna do is like pressure enough that our opponent has to living end, but also keep our graveyard full enough that if they do living end, we win instead of our opponent. I think that's the, the main goal. Eh, let's pass. Technically, we could Ox next turn, but we'd have to exile some good stuff. Yeah, we probably gotta wait. All right, opponent. Cycles a Stripe River Winder. Cycles a River Winder. Passes. Maybe we just upkeep Otherworldly Gaze? That might actually be the best plan. Yeah, let's just do that. Uh, so, Otherworldly Gaze. Well, Graveyard Dark Blast. Gemstone Mine. 
Keep the City of Brass. No, we'll draw the City of Brass. So play the City of Brass past the turn. I mean, so far we're not like super scared of our opponent doing uh, living end stuff because we get back the Ox. And getting back the Ox is just like so good. So I think if they living end here, we win off the living end. So I don't expect our opponent to actually living end. Oh, oh wait, that's actually, that's actually pretty big. Wow, okay. Opponent is cycled enough that we actually have lethal from Creeping Chill. Maybe this makes our opponent go for it. Now their graveyard's pretty big. Hilariously, we don't have many swamps. The upside of being budget. Psych, oh, are they missing lands? Living End has gotten pretty greedy on lands because of the land cyclers. Haggle, discard the thug, dredge the thug. All right, that's that's fine. So we get an Arc Amoeba, which gets a surprise to Malgum. We dredge Dark Blast, get another Narc Amoeba. Uh, yeah, might as well. Go to combat, hit ya. Down to five. So technically presenting lethal for next turn. Our opponent doesn't really have the luxury of just waiting. Do we want an Oxvagonus? Is it worth it? We need two Creeping Chills to win. Actually, you know what? Let's just... Let's just run out a, a Merchant here. I think we just put on so much pressure that our opponent has to living end. I think that's the plan. So if our opponent doesn't living end, we just beat him down and win. If they do living end, in theory, the ox plus dredging will hopefully, will hopefully just burn our opponent out with the creeping chills. All right, opponent's going to grief, pitching a living end. What a, what a weird matchup. <laughs> What a weird matchup. Oh, it takes the Curator of Mysteries. Takes the Dark Blast. Fury. Okay. Pitching a Violent Outburst. Well, so our opponent has realized that they are dead on board if they don't do something. The problem is I think they're probably going to be dead either way. So Fury going to blow up a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Sure. Passes. I mean, we only need a single Creeping Chill to win this game, right? That's all we need to do. Let's dredge the thug. We do not hit a Creeping Chill. Go to combat. Uh, maybe we just go for the ox. It might be worth it. Yeah, I mean, I think we do. I feel like our odds of winning here are so high, we just go for it. Uh, so, escape ox of a gonus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get it back. <laughs> Can we hit a creeping chill? Can we hit a creeping chill? Uh, dredge a stinkweed imp. Dredge a thug. Dredge a stinkweed. And yeah, that that should do it. All right, we found our creepy chills. Ponit did not find their lands. And uh, well, <laughs> this is a weird matchup. So what graveyard hate is our opponent gonna have? Endurance maybe is probably the most likely. They could have Leyline of the Void. Probably Wear Tear. Stern Dismissal. Do we want our own Ley Lines is the question. Tormod's Crypt, we do want that. So Dark Blast can probably go. Is Leyline worth it? That's the, that is the big question. So Leyline would stop Grief, and that's probably about it. It stops Endurance. That's the biggest upside, I guess, is if our opponent's on the Endurance plane, it does stop Endurance. How many cards can we sideboard out though, realistically? Maybe it's just like this. Oh, I kind of want the ley lines. All right, let's let's ley line in the dark. Ah, oh, but they're gonna have answers to the ley line, so maybe it's not worth it. I guess it would make them find an answer to the ley line. All right, no ley lines. Run it like that. All right, let's let's see if this actually works. Can we take down Living End with hundred dollar dredge? I almost want to keep just because we have the Tormod script. Eventually, we'll get to Ox, right? Do we keep? We only have two Graveyard Hate spells. I think we keep it. <laughs> this very well, the Dredge players watching this are probably screaming in horror because you're probably really, like, I know you normally want to keep hands that have a, that have a Dredger, but this has a Tormod script and we're against Living End. That's got to be worth as much as a Dredger, right? It is unfortunate that the rest of our hand, we have, what, 17 lands or something, and we have them just all in hand. Watch us just get griefed anyway. If we get griefed, then this hand becomes the worst. Passing. All right, let's draw something to fill our graveyard. Thrilling discovery. That's actually a pretty good draw. So let's play City of Brass. Yeah, let's let's pass. I think we hold on to the Tormod script for now. Probably play it next turn. Hmm. Cycles of Stripe River Winder. The risk is our opponent finding a grief. That's the that's the risk of keeping the Tormod script. Opponent oh, is the Rainforest. 
passes. How about a dredger? Let's draw a dredger to discard with this ox. Narcomoeba. We will place sulfurous springs. Red and white. Thrilling discovery. <laughs> Not the best thrilling discovery. Discard ox, discard Narcomoeba. Yeah, let's play the Tormod script. And pass the turn. Ooh, Moto, Moto dying. All right, opponent's doing some cycling, if Moto survives. Moto, not a fan of the, the Oliphant. <laughs> I will say there's been, there's been a lot of good things about Daybreak taking over Magic Online. Although I do feel like Magic Online has been leggier than normal lately. But there's been a, been a ton of upsides of it overall. All right, opponent cracks the Misty down to 17. I mean, the more damage our opponent takes from their lands, the easier it is for us to actually win with Creeping Chills, which is nice. All right, opponent gets a Breeding Pool. I mean, for now, we have the Living End covered with this Tormod script, which is nice. Our opponent definitely will have answers, but opponent shardless it wow are they actually are they actually gonna cast the living end or are they just playing this as a 2-2 i mean them casting a living end is kind of great for us okay so we will exile your graveyard living end gets back our ox and narc amoeba this is actually just great for us so we get to discard our hand dredge a stinkweed imp dredge a stinkweed imp dredge a stinkweed imp while wow, we hit like nothing Wow, Bonus Goops it up, Bonus Goops it up. Okay, I don't even know if that was a good plan for our opponent. We did kinda, so I guess we hit a Silver Smote. We did hit a Silver Smote. So we were gonna hit our opponent for three, get back a Silver Smote. Yeah, I don't know about that plan of just firing it off, but eh. <laughs> In the Battle of the Graveyard decks, $100 Dredge is the king. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I mean, we lost the die roll, unfortunately. But, I mean, we got Thrilling Discovery to discard two dredgers, so I think we keep this. Little, a little slow, perhaps, but we'll see. Wooded Foothills cracks it. Sacred Foundry. And Goblin Guide. If our opponent's playing Burn, this hand might actually be good enough. Ooh, we get a free land, too. That's actually kind of hilarious. Now we get to discard the Stinkweed. <laughs> Thanks to the Goblin Guide. <laughs> oh, we drew an Archimeba, which is not as good, but all right, uh, Gemstone Mine, go. Yeah, I feel like this should be a pretty good matchup for us. So we get to discard the Stinkweed to start the dredging. We have a bunch of life gain. I guess our opponent could have a bunch of skull cracks, but outside of that, I feel like this should just be, should just kind of be a freebie opponent. Goblin Guide, and what are you doing with the Goblin Guide? Ooh, are they gonna be aggro? If they don't have a skull crack, this life aim is gonna be huge. Lava spike, okay, down to 15. That's uh, that's temporary though, because of this thrill and ripple suspended. So we're dropping to 13. However, we should get to gain back a bunch of life next turn. Goblin guide, Whew. Oh no, creeping chill on top. That is unfortunate. Wow, that is literally the one thing we didn't want to see. Like quite literally. Okay, okay. I mean, I think we're still okay, but that is very, Brutal. Actually, no, that's fine. Cause we get to we get to dredge stinkweed. What am I what am I saying? Alright, so that's fine. So we get the creeping chill. Gain back three. Yeah, creeping chill is just a nightmare for for burn. Just free free lightning helix is kind of ridiculous. Uh so hit you to 13. Gemstone mine. Oh, this gets even worse for our opponent. We get to Thrill of Discovery to gain two more, discard Stinkweed and Thug. And well, here we go, Dredge Stinkweed, Dredge Thug, Dredge Stinkweed. All right, all right. So we get a Narcomoeba for free. One prized amalgam, <laughs> another another creeping gel. All right, so uh, yeah, I mean, we have undone literally all of our opponent's work. <laughs> Back up to 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost feel, I almost feel bad for our opponent here. This is just such a, such a brutal blowout. Wow. Okay, an opponent. Yeah, opponent realizes, like, they just really can't do anything about that. So, portable holes in. Leyline's kind of funny, but I don't know if it's necessary. So what are we worried about? Our opponent having, like, a rest in peace, I guess, is probably the most frightening. Sanctifier and back. Is stern dismissal even worth it? Probably not. All right, let's go down a mer- that was- that was just the cleanest- the cleanest victory imaginable. Like, not even- not even a little bit close. Maybe that's- maybe that's good enough. The ley lines are funny, but I don't know if just stopping random burn spells makes it worth it. Probably not. Could bring in a wear tear. We just don't know what their graveyard hate is. If it's rest in peace, yeah, I guess wear tear is probably worth it. 
Let's go down one ox, maybe. And actually, let's go one more dark blast. Run it like that. On to game number two, we are on the draw, but uh, we also have the ability to gain a lot of life. Uh, we really need a land, but we have a portable hole, which I like. Uh, this might be wrong, but I think we're gonna keep it. I think we're gonna keep it because portable holes like just one of our one of our best cards. That answers any of our opponent's graveyard haste. So all we need is a land to start doing things and then we're good. All right, that's City of Brass. That is, that is a land, that counts. All right, now this hand is spectacular. Opponent, going to do some riff bolting, sure. The nice thing about Portable Hole is, it is the one card that answers Sanctifier and also Rest in Peace. So no matter what graveyard hate our opponent has, this should be able to get rid of it. Opponent, Sunbaked Canyon. Roiling Vortex. All right, let's otherworldly gaze. Well, there's a Stinkweed. Graveyard. I mean, I think we're, we're just going for it, right? I think we're just going for it. Graveyard, let's just graveyard all this because we're going to dredge anyway. Actually, hmm. Yeah, everything, everything to the graveyard. So the opponent gets a Roiling Vortex, but that's fine because we get to untap. They don't have the mana to stop life gain this turn either. So this would be a nice turn to hit some creeping chills. This would be the perfect turn. So we get to untap, dredge Sinkweed, hit an Arc Amoeba. Yes. Play a land. Cathartic Reunion, discard two Stinkweeds. Dredge them. Dredge them. Oh god, three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, yeah, you're go, you're go, burn. The Roiling Vortex looking a bit slow for our opponent here. They had the, they had the life gain eight, they just didn't have the mana. That's the reason to play dredge, even, even for just a hundred bucks. Like, you just get these weird free wins by not really doing anything magic related. Yeah, I mean, I guess we dredge, sure. Dredge a thug, get an Arc Amoeba. Oh, that's a conflagrate? Is that just game? Yes. Down to eight. <laughs> We can discard our whole hand and make him lose to Roiling Vortex. <laughs> uh, yes. How about seven to the face? Discard everything. <laughs> See, this is why this doesn't really feel like playing magic. Well, other magic deck is like just cool with one with nothing themselves on turn three. Yeah, discard it all. Hit you for seven. Who's a burn deck now? Who's a burn deck now, Roiling Vortex? Goblin Guide player. Down to one and uh... I think this is what they call hoisted by your own petard, right? I mean, I guess our opponent, like, they can't crack their fetch, they can't tap the Sunbait Canyon. So I think my takeaway from this deck is it has hilariously bad matchups and then hilariously good matchups. Like, just look at what we just saw here against Bird. Like, it felt like we really couldn't lose. Like, we didn't really have to do much of anything, just, like, do the dredge thing, and we gained so much life with Creeping Chills. Like, our opponent just can't really interact with what we're doing. They can't stop it. They're not fast enough. But then when we run into, like, Tron or whatever, it's kind uh, it's kind of flipped and it feels like, oh no, like main deck graveyard hate, one rings, Ugans, Oblivion ring. They have like so many ways of stopping what we're doing. So seems like a deck that has very, very uh, polarized matchups, I would say. Like, and I guess that's the, I guess that's the nature of not playing magic. This is the opposite of, uh, like the direct opposite of something like Jund. You always hear that people talk about Jund, which is like the epitome of a deck that actually like plays magic. And with a deck like that, like you got a bunch of 50, 50 matchups you're like grinding out these little edges and trying to like get the two for ones and do all that like magic -y stuff. This deck is the opposite. It's just like, yeah, I mean, we're, we're doing this thing. We're gonna put a treasure in the graveyard. Hopefully it works out. If it does, like you're dead on turn three. If it doesn't, then uh, you played a graveyard heat spell and we'll move on to the next one. But I mean, there's some upside to that, right? Like you can grind through games pretty quickly. And uh, when you're dead, you're really dead. And when you're winning, you really win. So yeah, that's dredge. Honestly, I don't think the $100 budget aspect mattered much at all. Like uh, there wasn't uh, very many cases where the issue, the main deduction would be like the mana. That's the, that's probably the biggest thing you lose playing a hundred dollar budget is like you can't fetch up a blood crypt or whatever but in all honesty with all the matches we played with the deck the mana was like pretty fine like that was rarely an actual an actual problem so i don't think the budget aspect is actually an issue when we lost it wasn't because oh we're we're a budget deck we lost because oh you had graveyard hate and <laughs> and you could be a, a million dollar version of dredge and you're probably still gonna lose to graveyard hate because that is the the nature of the nature of the archetype that tries to win by not playing magic, but yeah, 
That's hundred dollar dredge. That's been our deck for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you soon. So what did we learn this week about $100 Dredge in Modern? Overall, between two player queues and leagues, played 11 matches with this deck and ended up going five and six. So just under a 50% match win percentage, which man, for a $100 budget deck in an expensive format like Modern, not great, but it's perfectly fine. I think that for me, Dredge is one of those archetypes that Every Magic player should try once. It's just so infamous and so unique and plays in such a weird way that it's something that I think everyone should experience just to just to see how it works because it's so different than any other archetype in Modern. But I couldn't imagine ever being a Dredge player where this is my primary deck because I think I get bored of it eventually. And it's just a super polarized deck. Like the matchups are so polarized. Does our opponent have a Graveyard Heat spell? Then okay, you basically get us. Like we kind of just scoop to a rest in peace. That's a little exaggeration. We do have sideboard cards to answer, but if our opponent has a bunch of graveyard hate, we kind of just don't do anything and we're hard casting Stinkweed Imps and Narc Amoebas and it's really, really bad. But if they don't have that, we just kind of steamroll them and they can't do anything. We don't care about any of the stuff they're doing. So it's just such a unique archetype. The only other thing I'd say about this deck is it is upgradable, but the upgrades are basically just the mana base and sideboard. Like if you look at the best dredge deck possible in modern, the non lands are going to look a lot like our deck. The upgrades are basically fetch lands and shock lands like any deck and then a lot of dredge decks play four gemstone caverns in their sideboard the land that if you're on the draw you can start in play by exiling the card from your hand just as a way to speed up the deck by a turn the only thing about gemstone is it is like 200 dollars a play set so just that land by itself triples the price of the deck actually though the lands are still kind of expensive in this deck if you look at our hundred dollar deck cost like half of that is a place that is city of brass but we really need it to make the mana work so i think that is the the biggest upgrade you could make to the deck although i probably wouldn't spend two hundred dollars just for a land that i'm only going to use half the time in my sideboard but from a competitive perspective that extra turn you get if you're on the draw just speeding the deck up by a turn is a pretty big deal so anyway that is budget dredge for modern that is trying to win games of magic without actually really playing any magic. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.